Hi everybody and welcome back to the Motility Prokinetics series on this channel. I wanted to take a moment and really geek out with you about a really cool study that demonstrates just how important prokinetics, motility, and MMC function is for people with SIBO to the point where it can even prevent SIBO when you're exposed to a known trigger. Now what does this all mean? So within the world of SIBO, we know that certain things will set the stage and either cause SIBO or make you much, much, much more prone to developing SIBO. And one of the things that continues to come out in research repeatedly year after year is proton pump inhibitors, PPIs. This is a class of drugs that includes Nexium, Prilosec, Omeprazole, Protonix. All of these act on the proton pump in the parietal cells of the stomach and decrease your stomach acid production. They're used for reflux and GERD, um, you know, uh, ulcers. Uh, that's typically what they're going to be prescribed for. And when you take a proton pump inhibitor for more than uh, a month or two, it really sets the stage for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and probably other sorts of dysbiosis as well. So this is a known SIBO risk factor. That's why, for example, with me, I ask every single one of my new patients whether or not they have taken a PPI, and I ask them for how long. I have a part of my questionnaire that is structured in a way that asks, have you ever taken these drugs? And it gives a range for one month, two months, three months, six months plus. So I get a general sense of what their risk factors are. So this is why I ask. Well, with this, I'm going to share with you a 2018 study titled Risk of Small Intestinal Bacterial Overgrowth in Patients Receiving Proton Pump Inhibitors versus Proton Pump Inhibitors plus Prokinetics. So the idea with the study was that they took the two arms of the study, uh, two groups of patients who had to receive PPIs for whatever reason, probably reflux, GERD, um, you know, ulcer, something of that nature, and they randomized them into two cohorts. One cohort only received the PPI. The other cohort received the PPI plus a prokinetic. Now, this is in the medical world, so of course they were using prescription drugs, but we know darn well that there's a lot of herbs and supplements such as ginger, 5-HTP, chamomile, that will have a similar prokinetic effect or motility, MMC promoting effect. And what they found was really cool. Out of 147 patients, SIBO was documented in 13.2% of the group A, which was the group that only received the PPI, and only 1.8% of people who received the PPI plus a prokinetic. So it essentially dropped the risk factor, the risk of developing SIBO from 13.2% to 1.8%, which is pretty darn good. And you know what's really funny about this type of research, actually, and I'll kind of pop this in the old calculator while I'm making this video. There's two ways to really look at data like this. There is the, hold on, multitasking. So there's two ways to really kind of crunch numbers when you're looking at research studies. And keep in mind, I'm going to sound like a crazy, crunchy conspiracy theorist, but the way that the research words things can be relevant, and I think that they strategically try to analyze data in a way that paints medications as good and paints risks of medications in a less severe sounding light. So keep that in mind. But when you look at those two numbers, you think, well, 13.2 versus 1.8. So it effectively dropped the overall risk, the risk reduction for the individual person went down about 10% or 11.4%, right? 13.2 minus 1.8. That is a totally reasonable way to look at the data. The other way you can look, and this is getting into statistics of relative versus absolute risk, you could also say, that 1.8% percent 
is 7.33 fold lower than the original risk of 13.2. Worded another way, again, depending on what angle they're trying to take in the study, you can say that the rate of SIBO was 733% higher in the people who only got the PPI versus the people who got the PPI plus a prokinetic. So when you say that, when you say 733% greater risk for not getting the PPI, oh my God, it makes it sound like everybody needs a PPI right now, let alone if you have SIBO, my goodness. So just keep that in mind. I didn't actually mean this video to be a big um, like nerd statistics video, but just to paint that in light, I think that's a pretty profound drop to go from 13.2 down to 1.8 is a pretty significant drop in risk of developing SIBO. And it's worth noting too that the way they assessed SIBO in this case was both the lactulose and the glucose breath test for patients. And what that means is that there was probably some patients who were missed. Lactulose and glucose don't catch 100% of SIBO patients. And this is actually one of my videos that I'm waiting to do is to talk a little bit more about breath testing and how imperfect that is as a tool. Now, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I order these tests all the time and it's not that they're not useful, but I hate for people to get a negative diagnosis of SIBO based on an imperfect test and then assume that they don't have to worry about SIBO because that is not necessarily the case. You have to take all testing with a grain, a grain of salt or maybe two or three. So within this study, it's possible that the risk was actually a little bit higher in both groups but since they were using the exact same testing methods and the exact same you know, evaluation throughout, I'm gonna take the overall reduction in risk for what it is. So you heard it here, 2018 study of 147 patients dropped the risk of getting SIBO with PPI use by a fair margin. And you could say it is a 700 fold increased risk if you don't take a PPI or a pro prokinetic, sorry, with a PPI or that you are dropping your risk by about 700%. Either way, I think it's all pretty significant and it points to twofold. It points towards PPIs causing SIBO and also how important prokinetics, MMC and motility really, really are to the SIBO world. So for goodness sakes, if you have SIBO, if you have IBS, if you have any hint of dysmotility, my goodness gracious, start trialing prokinetics. You can order a lot of them online and start dipping your toe in the water and trying a whole bunch of different ones and seeing if one or more of them really make a significant impact for you. That is all for this video. I will catch you on the next video. Thanks for tuning in.